a pill to treat those exposed uh, to radioactive materials. Let's hope that we never need to use such a thing, but if we do, we have someone working on that problem as well. Please welcome Rebecca Abergel. Thank you. Well, good evening, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here and to tell you about what my team does at Berkeley Lab. Um, so we are developing a new oral therapeutic to treat people that would be internally contaminated with radionuclides. And there are two major concepts in this big idea. There is the pill concept and the radioactive concept. And I'm going to start with the radioactive part because it's probably the scarier one. So we have a lot of radioactive materials around us. Um, it's used pretty much in everyday life in nuclear medicine, think diagnostic imaging, radiotherapy, it's used in industrial processes for energy production. It's used in the research lab. Um, it's used in little devices that are in your kitchen, smoke detectors. So most often, radioactive materials are more helpful than harmful, but that's because they're very well contained. And so problems happen when they start spreading. And you've seen this kind of images. I'm sure you have, um, or at least you were thinking about it. That's um, the catastrophic image that um, we picture for nuclear disasters. And you're probably thinking about the Chernobyl event, uh, Three Miles Island, Fukushima, that happened a little more than two years ago. So really, um, we can um, see this kind of cloud of radioactive particles form. And in that case, it's very hard to prevent the fallout. And people will eventually ingest or inhale radioactive materials. And this is where it starts becoming harmful. And so, we don't want those, those events to happen, but we have to mitigate the contamination if it happens. And how do we do this? So this is pretty much um, the shielding around here. <laughs> but it's probably very good shielding, but this is not what we use. So at the lab, we focus on um, those elements down there um, in the periodic table, the lanthanides and the actinides. They're F elements, and they have very specific properties. Their coordination chemistry is very specific, and we use it in our research. Um, I'll just do a PR action there. There are a lot of those elements that were um, discovered at Berkeley. There's berkelium that was discovered at Berkeley Lab. We, we do target uranium, plutonium, americium, so you've probably heard of those elements. Um, all the actinides are radioactive. The lanthanides, um, some of them come as radioactive isotopes. Uh, most of them are found in nuclear processes, so we do target those elements. And we do this by designing molecules that will chelate them. They will target them, they're metal ions. They will bind those metals through, for the chemists out there, through the oxygen atoms that are highlighted in red. They will form very stable complexes that are much easier to excrete. They're more soluble than the contaminants themselves. And so once we've targeted from the complex, we can get rid of the contaminant. And so this is not only chemistry in the test tube, we do have to do some proof of concept experiments, and we do this using an animal model. We do inject mice with radioactive isotopes, and in this particular case, it's plutonium. And then we give them our treatment, and we do follow the radioactivity in the body and in the excretion so that we know where it's going, how fast it's coming out, and how it's coming out. And so in this particular proof of concept experiment, we're looking at plutonium that's left in the body after 24 hours. And our control animals um, are those animals that were contaminated with plutonium, but we didn't give them any treatment. And so you see that about 90% of the plutonium that was injected is still in the body after 24 hours. And it tends to deposit there for the long term. So you find them, uh, you find the plutonium in the, the skeleton, that's the gray area. You find it in the liver, that's the red area, in the soft tissues, in the kidneys. When we give them our treatment, in this particular case, it's only once. We can go down to about 15% left. So that's a dramatic decrease in plutonium content after 24 hours, and that's only a single dose. So this is a proof of concept experiment, um, and this is where the real work starts. On average, um, drugs need about a billion dollar and 15 years to get from the research bench to the marketplace. Hopefully, we'll go faster than this. But um, our work really relies on three pillars now. Um, one of them is formulation, one of them is efficacy, and one of them is safety. So the first one, formulation, um, this leads me back to what I mentioned earlier. Uh, we're developing a pill. 
if there is a large event of contamination, so a lot of people contaminated in a big metropolitan area, we don't want to be handing out needles and tell them to inject themselves. We want to be giving pills that are easy to take, easy to crush to give children or older people. So we're doing a lot of um, work to formulate this compound as a pill. Once this is done, we have to test this, its efficacy, and we cannot contaminate people on purpose. That's not really ethical, right? So we're not gonna do clinical trials where we give plutonium to people. Um, so we have to test this in animal models, and we do um, test the efficacy of our drug. We have to understand how much of the drug we need to give, um, how long we need to give it for, if we give a single dose every day for 20 days or a single dose every day for a year, um, when do we stop? When do we know that most of it has come out? So that's the efficacy part. Then there is the safety. We do need to test the safety. We can't just give it to people. We need to understand that there are no side effects, there is no toxicity, so there will be a clinical trial just to test the safety. So all this data that we're gathering, we, need to, we really just need to confirm that this is a safe drug and it's actually working. And so once we've done this, hopefully soon, we can tell the Food and Drug Administration that we can use it, but hopefully we will never have to use it. And so um, it's a lot of work, and I need to point out that um, there are a lot of people working um, on this project. There are a lot of different collaborations out there, and it will take um, more than eight, six minutes to list all of them. Um, but this is definitely team science, and hopefully it will be cheaper, faster, and we'll get there, and you will never have to use our drugs. Thank you. <laughs>